Today, the midterm elections here in Indiana, Republicans won big, but elsewhere, Democrats are celebrating after a stronger finish nationally than some had anticipated. So what does it mean moving forward to 2024? I'll talk one-on-one -on -one with Senator Mike Braun, who's considering a run for governor. And we'll talk with Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg about his party's prospects and his own future in politics. It's all ahead right now on this week's edition of In Focus. Thanks for joining us. We are your local election headquarters. And as we wait for more results to determine which party controls Congress and by what margin, after some of these tight races we've seen all across the country. You know, here in Indiana, it was a fairly lopsided race for U.S. Senate with incumbent Senator Todd Young reelected to a second term amidst a big night for Republicans statewide. Kristen Eskow has more today from the State House on this year's midterms. Indiana Republicans winning the statewide races on the ballot this year and maintaining the GOP supermajority in both chambers of the Indiana legislature. The results, though, are different from those seen nationwide. At the top of the ticket, Republican Senator Todd Young defeats Democratic challenger Tom McDermott, securing another six years in the Senate. Uh, we need to sh make sure that uh, we work to pass spending bills or so-called appropriations bills consistent with that budget. And all of that is in furtherance of trying to get uh, spending under control. Indiana's congressional delegation will hold at seven Republicans and two Democrats. Republicans also saw success in the statewide races, auditor, treasurer, and secretary of state, with Diego Morales prevailing over Democrat Destiny Wells, despite criticism his candidacy faced on several issues. I will work as hard as I've been doing to make you all of you proud and take this office the legacy of all secretaries of state to the next level. The GOP held its supermajority at the state house and appears to have picked up some seats in the legislature. Experts say the results aren't a surprise. The, the elections in many, many places in Indiana are in some sense a foregone conclusion. Stephen Webster teaches political science at Indiana University. This is part of a broader trend as well where people care more about the party that represents them than the person. Martin Sweet of Purdue University says last year's redistricting made many seats less competitive. When uh, state legislatures craft their new districts, they typically protect incumbents. Sweet says that may help explain why Republicans didn't pick up as many congressional seats nationwide as they had hoped for. I think right now Republicans are probably pretty upset with Donald Trump, right? The candidates that he selected around the country fared quite poorly. And so one would think that had he not meddled in the process in the primary, that perhaps Republicans could have had bigger gains. There are a few state house races that are close and may come down to a recount, but the results of those races wouldn't change the outcome in terms of balance of power here at the state house. At the Indiana State House, I'm Kristen Escal. All right, Kristen, thanks. Let's look at the congressional races in the 9th District. An open seat former state Senator Aaron Houchin elected to Congress, defeating Matthew Fife. In the 8th, Congressman Larry Bouchon re-elected there in the southwestern part of the state, defeating Ray McCormick. And in the 7th District, covering much of Indianapolis, incumbent Democrat Andre Carson is headed back to Congress, defeating Republican Angela Grabowski. That's what tonight is all about. We have to rebuild again. Win or lose, we need to tell every person who voted today and who didn't vote today that they should never give up. Meantime, in the 6th District, Representative Greg Pence held on to his seat, which now includes the southern portion of Marion County. The newly reconfigured 5th District will again be represented by Victoria Sparts, who defeated Janine Lake. Another incumbent Republican, Jim Baird, victorious in the 4th District, defeating Roger Day. Same in the 3rd District, covering Fort Wayne. Incumbent Republican Jim Banks re-elected, rising in the GOP ranks. He could potentially be the next House Whip. Open seat in the 2nd District to replace the late Jackie Wilarski, her former finance director, Rudy Yakim. Victorious there in northern Indiana this week. Finally, the 1st District, usually a Democratic stronghold, but Republicans had been targeting this seat. It was close, but in the end... Congressman Frank Mervan victorious over Republican Jennifer Ruth Green. Senator Mike Braun had campaigned for Green there in the 1st District, and he'll soon be back out on the campaign trail himself ahead of 2024. But will he be running for re-election to the Senate or for governor instead? I spoke with him this week about the upcoming election cycle and about this past week's elections that didn't go quite as well as Republicans had hoped, at least at the national level. 
Certainly Republicans had a strong night in Indiana, but the, the red wave uh, didn't crest nearly as high as your party had hoped. What happened? You know, go back to a good night in Indiana. I don't know that that could have gone any better. I spent uh, a couple weeks on our Senate, uh, kind of back in our home state, been here since September 29th, and stumped for many of our state and local candidates. Uh, was up in the region for uh, Jennifer Ruth Green. and She lost a close race a there. close yeah. race, and when that one's in play, uh, something's afoot. It's just a question of when that, I think, comes into maybe where we are going to notch that victory. But across the country, uh, I think you can look at places like Ohio and Florida, you know, Texas had wider margins in a lot of their races, but in many, you know, it's different. And I'm a big believer that you, you may learn something from the places where you were successful and then try to parlay that into a national approach, but it's probably difficult because all of these states are different in that spectrum of what's going to work. Uh, you need to know that for sure so you do well within your states. Trying to generalize that to where the Democrats would be successful or the Republicans, were that evenly divided. And I don't know when that happens. And now it looks like control of the Senate could very well come down to this runoff in Georgia with Herschel yeah. Walker on the ballot against current Senator Warnock. Are, are you concerned uh, about, about that, given some of the troubles Walker's had throughout the well, campaign? Well, that's deja vu. Uh, you know, we've had that two, occur two before. Yeah. And uh, that is what put us into this uh, kind of uh, dynamic within the Senate. and. It almost hard to imagine if you tried to stage it this way that it would come down to exactly this. Exactly the same way. And uh, we'll have to live with it. And I think it's going to be instructive for each side of the aisle to figure out what that means. Yeah. I've been, since I've been there, it's now four years, uh, interested in trying to find a solutions approach to a federal government that's kind of out of bounds in many ways, when especially the fiscal issues are brought into account. Uh, I think we got to have a business plan for the country as Republicans. And we didn't do that last since Newt Gingrich did it. Now there's talk that Kevin McCarthy is going to do it in the House. And look how close that's going to be. It won't be with a mandate. Yeah. So sooner or later, you got to articulate what you're for uh, and do it in the context of your party principles. You and think I, the party needs to do more of that? I, I think so. Yeah. I think in the big, biggest business in the world where so many people look to it, you're going to have to articulate what you're for. You've uh, reportedly been considering a yep. run for governor. Is that something you're still considering? And when will we hear more about a timeline for it? So I've been asked to consider it uh, when it probably wasn't even worth mentioning shortly after I got elected. I come from the world of running a business for 37 years, and we need more people that have done that in the U.S. Senate and the House of Representatives. Um, we've been, I've been pleased with what we've got accomplished. Um, I pledged I wouldn't do it more than two terms. So uh, I, it's to the point where I am going to make that public uh, here soon, uh, probably by the end of the month. So uh, I'll leave it at that. And uh, I've uh, you know, got there with a lot of hard work uh, to become a senator. I think I understand the system, how it works. Uh, I think it's going to need more time uh, to get to where we address some of the inherent problems, and uh, I'll make my decision based upon all that. D does the Georgia runoff or control of the Senate overall factor into your decision, whether you'll be working no, in the minority again or in the majority? That won't, because think about it. The Senate needs 60 votes to get anything passed yeah. other than... Uh, taxes, spending, or debt through reconciliation. And you can't even use that technique unless you control both chambers and the presidency. So we're going to be, if the, we get the House back, it's going to be where hardly anything gets done the next two years. And there are vital issues out there that we're still going to talk about and uh, robustly uh, get through. And then I'm going to make the decision on what to do and announce it publicly here soon. Well, and you've so. expressed some frustration at how Washington works or yeah. doesn't work in many cases. Yeah. Does the idea of coming back to the State House appeal to you more this day and age? Well, I think that uh, I have to size all that up that decision's and make soon. it public, and it's <laughs> going to be soon. All right, so we'll be watching for that decision. We're also waiting to see what former President Trump and former Vice President Pence decide to do here in the coming days and weeks. Fascinating column this week from the former VP about some of his last conversations with Donald Trump while in office. So what happens next? Could they both end up running for president? We'll see here in the weeks to come.